when you will try to see, even in the future, the already the incidence is increasing. In fact, the age of those patients which is happening is also becoming younger and younger. So, when you will start looking at the age, uh, like the sex wise, so for example, these male or female, <coughs> so we can clearly notice females are much more predisposed for the heart failure hospitalization compared to the males, in fact. So, we will come to uh, the cause as well. So, what is happening? So if we will try to see for the races as well, we are pretty much aware for the coronary artery disease definitely India is already the world's capital. So same thing happens even for the heart failure as well. So if we look carefully over here we can see compared to the in Indians when we try to compare it to the whites or the Chinese, it's abysmally pretty high. So, so what is happening is, uh, let me try to make it a little bit simpler. So if someone is getting admitted for the first time, the mortality may not be so high. However, if the patient is getting admitted, readmitted, and even more readmitted, the chances of the mortality or the survival of that patient starts decreasing with each and every readmission. So in fact, just within the first month of the discharge, almost one fourth of those patients will be getting readmitted. So so much as this it tends to literally become what is called as a vicious cycle. In fact, just within six months, almost half of those patients who were discharged, they will be coming back to the hospital. And they will be needing a hospital care in fact. And when they try to see on an insurance basis, so this is a more of a, a US thing, Medicare beneficiaries, they try to accumulate all the data from those insurance beneficiaries, and they try to see almost 50% almost every third of the patient who was admitted just within one year, they will be no longer to celebrate their next, uh, you know, uh, birth celebration in fact. A happy birthday, I would say. So what is happening? So as, as I was already telling you, when those patients, they start getting admitted, so they try to do one of those studies, trying to study those four communities in the US. So then they saw it like this is, in fact, the mortality, when you try to compare it on a long-term basis, it keeps increasing. And in fact, it goes up to so much, for example, for the five years uh, rate, you will see, in fact, 42%. As I said, it, almost half of those patients will already be dead. Isn't it such an alarming figure? And when we will try to see, for example, in India, what is happening? In India, the worst problem is those patients, not just for the coronary artery disease, even for the heart failure as well, they tend to be almost a decade younger. In the sense, I still remember when I was doing my cardiology residency, I did my uh, post-graduation from India itself. Uh, for my doctorate, I would move abroad. So during that time as well, it was taught to us like 65 for the male, 55, uh, 55 uh, for the, uh, and for 55 for the female is a risk factor for the coronary artery disease. But being at Narayana, they are at Bangalore during my post-graduation time, I remember, and even after coming over here as well, I have seen those people like who 20, 22 year old, young guys, or even young girls as well, having heart attack. So the similar thing is also happening even in the heart failure as well. So what is happening is, even uh, when we talk about the number of patients which is getting adding up is also a huge number. And as I said, it, it is more like a vicious cycle. So in fact, 20% of those people more than 40 years of age, almost one fifth so out of every five almost one of them is having a heart failure it might be known to him it might be unknown to him even with dr Gimal sir may remember there was a young girl just three days back she came from Malipura. she had already been seen off by so many doctors and all and then uh, when i when when i did the echo and i was like surprised and shocked and then i discussed with uh, dr Gimal. so she had already been seen by so many doctors at Madhepura, even in Patna as well but she, no one had ever discussed, like, she was having a heart failure. And that was a young girl, 19 year old. <coughs> so there are several predisposing factors as well. So what I mean is, it's not just an exclusive disease, which is going to happen only in the old age, but there are some patients as well, which can be happening or having this problem as well, even in their young age. And when you will talk about the economics, because right now we all are concerned about the money, because India is a developing economy. So what is really happening is up to 2.3 billion dollar India is losing. So it's not 
you know, something a very small amount, it's pretty significant, right? So in fact, with the passage of time as well, when you will try to see about the time difference or the average cost as well for per hospitalization, it starts increasing. It starts increasing. And the problem in India is, we all are aware, most of those patients are paying out of their own pocket. Because the penetration of insurance or the social insurance as well is very, very minimal. And what happens what happens is when you will try to see, uh, as I already pointed out about the 30 day readmission following the discharge, it keeps on increasing further and further. So once the patient has already developed the heart failure, most oftenly, I'm not telling always, most oftenly, either the patient is under treated, else the patient has not been titrated for their medications. Otherwise, the other significant problem is also the compliance of the patient. So compliance of the patient in the sense, so we have said it like try to take this medicine up and uh, keep on taking these medicines. So once the patient starts feeling better, they will be like, okay, now there is no need for that medication. And that's what typically happens. So that's why uh, they also try to see, for example, what about the other causes? What about those other medical causes uh, the, as the etiology which is causing the admission for or readmission as well? So of course, other than the heart failure, renal disorders, pneumonia, the respiratory tract infections as well for them, and of course the arrhythmias in fact. And a lot of times, an insignificant number can also present in the form of septicemic shock. So there is already septicemia which is causing a lot of circulatory problems for the patients. So this is one of the most powerful heart failure studies which was done globally. So if we look carefully on this slide, so most of these countries are represented very well. In fact, 637 patients for this study, out of total 8,500 uh, 8, approximately, a pretty good number of those patients were enrolled from India because Indians always try to uh, complain, oh, uh, uh, Indian patients were not enrolled in this study, how can we believe in this? Is it Indian enough or not? So in this study, they try to enroll people literally from everywhere, not just US or the Western population as well. Uh, even my country where I was doing my uh, doctorate and post-doctorate study in Netherlands is also represented. So, so what had happened this is in this study, uh, they tried to use it among the most standard medication for the heart failure, which is ACE inhibitor. Especially in the Western world, one of the most common ACE inhibitor which is used is Inalapril. So when they tried to compare the, the two groups as well, that for example, how much of those patients is getting readmitted? So when they tried to compare the two groups, they saw that for this unique combination of Ymara, which is a combination of succubital plus Valsartan, there is a significant difference of almost 23%. So for example, out of a group of four people, uh, at least one uh, person is getting admitted less than the readmission rate. Right? So and one of the other important things is uh, that in the current days what we are practicing is called as evidence-based medicine. So what is, if you are able to show the evidence, so that is what it needs to be followed as well. So this is a beautiful capital mayor curve in the simple terms. So after the randomization has been done, they try to see, for example, how much is the hospitalization, how much of those patients need to get admitted to the hospice care for them. And then they saw, among the drugs, so I think we can really see it clearly. Huh? So those people who are using this drug, which is <coughs> inalapril, the ACE inhibitor, their hospitalization rate was much, much significant compared to Vaimata. Even when you will try to see not just the first admission, the second admission, the again the third readmission as well, it is very much frequent for inalapril, in fact, the ACE inhibitor. I'm really confused between those buttons. I'm not so used to this anyway. I keep on talking about them. Okay, so even in the hospital course as well, they try to see, okay, if we can see, for example, how many number of days was that admission period, okay? For example, similarly, if someone had to be admitted in the intensive care as well, how about those number of days? So they further saw there is a significant p-value which is associated significantly lower for those patients who were there on the Y-Mada patients. So for example, if someone is taking that medicine, 
the number of days of stay in the ICU is going to be lesser. Even the number of days of stay in the hospital is also going to be lesser as well. So in the paradigm study as, uh, as well, they also tried to see that how much was the number of emergency visits or emergency departments. So for example, how many times that patient had to go to, other than the common outpatient department visits, how many times he had to go to the emergency as well. Of course, they saw it like that. This is again higher with the ASM returns. Of course, it is much lesser for the YMARA. So we are always curious. Did they employ uh, really sick patients for those Vaimana group or is it something else? So when we will look carefully at the patient characteristics of both the patients, so we can see carefully, in fact, they are having a pretty similar and really well matched, very, very closely matched as well. So even if we talk about the alpine, <coughs> pretty same, history of stroke as well, almost same, the myocardial infarction or the ejection fraction as well, it's almost same. So okay, now the patient has been already been taken care in the uh, hospital. Then they went back. Oops, sorry. So they went back uh, uh, to their homes, and then they tried to see, for example, about the 30-day heart failure re-admission. Unfortunately, so over here it seems definitely different compared to the Weimarer group again over here as well. And uh, yes. So, so what is the message? What we are getting is. So as we already said it, in 21st century what we are supposed to practice is what is called evidence-based medicine. <laughs> so in the paradigm heart failure study was a revolutionary path-breaking study as well which came and just with a single clinical study, there are very few molecules in the history of medicine, with just a single study a molecule has been approved by the US FDA and this molecule was one of them. And due to considerable benefits for the patient which was seen. So in fact, they concluded with this study as that when they try to see, not just it gives morbidity benefits, but also mortality benefits as well. And even in economics wise as well, the number of readmissions, the number of uh, hospital stay, the number of days of emergency uh, visits or the number of ICU visits, they all has been pretty much lesser. So I think there is a clear message and I'll be much more than happy to answer if there are any questions.